Welcome to Jim Jim. Hey, sexy. My name is Evelyn. I'm a dancer turned personal trainer existing in the realm where creative and functional movement collide. And if you're feeling the vibe, subscribe, baby. Like if you like it. Help me out with Mr. Algorithm if you're nasty. Now, sis, I know what you're saying. Girl, I forgot you had a YouTube channel. <laughs> fair because it's been a minute since I posted but I recently moved to a new state and I applied sight unseen for my apartment now that I have seen said sight the gym situation that I have doesn't give me the depth to record on you know your girl's iPhone so for right now until the lease is up I'm gonna give you value in a different way but you know this kind of challenged me to grow anyway that's a whole nother gym gym episode because sometimes we feel like things aren't going our way so we need to stop but sometimes we just need to shift to go to the vision meaning there are thousands millions of follow along workout videos out there that you can go to other channels to follow by amazing creators you know but for right now until said lease is up i am going to give you value in a different way so i want to help with form critique i want to help get you set up so that you are at the workout so that you can get all the wonderful benefits that you have so that's what you can expect from this channel now today we're talking about carving out our calendars because gym gym number one to be a consistent ass bitch make sure that you can do what you want to do because if you can't do then rule number two Hit up Evelyn and ask your questions, friends. Okay, so carving out your calendar is actually a lesson that I teach in my online program, Confident Curves Code. I'm actually accepting clients right now. So if you want to be a part of that, you know, go here because I help busy professional women, right? So our schedules are not the same every week. We get different things. Now, I'm just going to give you a general overview. I'm not going to go in depth in the lesson that's in the program, but I feel like this is enough to help you get a good start. So I'm gonna give you five tips. Now, as my mom used to say, we're gonna start with the worst first, meaning if you can plan for the worst week and still be consistent, then when you're at your easiest week, you already have your schedule set up. So let's go with step number one. Now, step number one is word vomit. And I don't know if you ever had that phrase used in college, but it's basically when you just brainstorm and write down without thinking everything that you need. You're gonna word vomit two things. So first you're gonna start off with the things that you know that you already do. So let's go sleep, eat, work activities. Activities can include extracurricular activities that you typically do, social activities like a date, like on Friday we have date nights, on Wednesday is happy hour with the girls, kids activities, puppies activities, anything like that. Then you're going to word vomit all the other things that don't happen as often, right? So if that's like a social event, like I have a wedding or a party to go to on the weekend, if that's a work deadline increase, a workload increase, if you're in school and you're like, I have finals coming up or a paper due, if you, I mean, we don't like to say it because we're in a pajama party, but if you get sick, what does that look like and how sick am I? Am I like, oh, period cram sick? Or is it like, I have a cold and I'm going to be out for a few days type sick. So those things we need to plan on. If you're part of an event, right? If you're part of a wedding, you know, there's a lot of schedule things that come with that. If you're in a play, if you're traveling, if you're out of town, if you have family in town, I'm just giving you all the things that can happen because I want you to be thorough because what we're going to do in step two is write the week. So writing out the week. So you're going to give me Saturday, sorry, Saturday. Come on, Evelyn. You're going to give me Sunday through Saturday, and I want you to actually do hour blocks. Like, we're being clear here. So, hour blocks. And then I want you to write the craziest week you could possibly have. So, give me a week that has all the baseline things, maybe a work deadline, maybe family is coming in town. Give yourself a couple of options, even if you can think back to a week where you're like, this was the craziest week, and I only had time to do the things that I had to do right down that week. Okay, so take a little time that might, you know, that might take you a good 20 minutes to write that out because I want you to be detailed by the hour. Next, 
Step three. Hold on, y'all. I need my dogs. Guys, they don't care. You know, let me just let me just take a break and say, as you can see <laughs> outside, six o'clock and fall is hitting different than six o'clock in the summer, you know? So so here we are. But that's okay. We're talking about scheduling anyway. So one second for a dog break. Can y'all stop making noise, please? Step three, we're going to carve out our calendars. So you're going to look at that time frame and I want you to do sleep first, right? So sleep, six hours is what you need to recharge and really be able to do all the teams, all the teams. So eight hours is preferred. Six hours, if you can fit it, is the minimum, okay? Then I want you to write out your meal blocks. So I'm going to eat here. If you're eating while you're doing another activity, and obviously that's overlap. Write out your meal blocks. Then you're going to look back and say, okay, what are the availability blocks that I had? Now, I know there are a lot of memes going out like free time doesn't equal availability. And I agree, but guess what? You said you wanted to work out. So your free time as a busy professional woman does equal availability. Okay? Because that's all you're going to, that's, that's the only time that you have available is your free time, right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. I never shame people for not working out because we have a lot of other things that take our immediate priority, even though, you know, I understand that without my body being healthy, I can't show up for everything else in the long run. That's another situation. I don't blame people or, uh, you know, shame people for not working out because it requires a heightened level of discipline and intention, okay? So kudos to you for having discipline and intention because it has to be heightened to do this. So if you're not willing to do that, then, you know, this is a good exercise to say, hey, I do have the time, but I'm, I'm not willing to make that time. But I am I'm aware of what consequences come with that. OK, so you're going to carve out those times. You did your sleep, you did your meals. And now I want you to go back and look at any two hour blocks that you have. So we're doing two hours because normally it takes you about like an hour to get ready and or an hour to shower and be ready to do the next thing. And an hour for workout is what you need. So three minimum two hour blocks, but I want you to find five, find five in there if you can. Now, if you are a busy professional woman, anybody can be watching this because I want y'all all here. But if you fall into that category, your free time is more than likely going to be in the morning, right? So even if you, sis, even if you went to sleep at midnight, you woke up at 6 a.m., that gives you two hours to be out the door by 8 a.m. If you have a tradition of 9 to 5, that gives you enough time for a commute, make sure you include that. So then you're going to go to step four. Step four is basically cross-referencing. So you're going to look at the time slots that you have available and you're going to cross-reference with the energy available. So sometimes we have energy at different influxes of the day, right? Like, oh, I feel energized at this time of the day. I typically don't feel energized here because assuming that you have some night availability, right? Because technically in the night we have availability, but you don't necessarily have the energy because, you know, maybe... By the time you get home, you're like, I have to eat. Well, now I got to let my food digest. Well, now I sat on the couch while my food was digesting and eating. And now I feel like I'm just going to have a glass of wine and sit here. So you want to cross-reference with your energy availability. Okay, now we're planning for the worst possible week. So in your worst week, you should have managed to plan out at least three two-hour blocks that allow you to get a one-hour workout in and get dressed and get out the house. And hopefully five right? So the step five, and again, I'm going through this quickly, but step five is then to set the scenario. So you have your worst possible week. We said this is the craziest week. Even in our craziest week, this is the time that we have available to dedicate to working out. Then you're going to come up with different scenarios. So A is normal scenario. So A, you're going to do a right the week, Saturday, Sunday through Saturday of just a normal week. And then cross-reference now with the schedule that you made for the worst week. Do those time blocks still work? They should. If they worked in the worst week, they should work in a, in a good week. Keep that. 
uh, um, scenario B is going to be a singular event. So again, going back to that wedding, a party, um, an art gallery you have to attend, whatever. And then we're gonna go C. C is increased workload or time commitment. So that's like, okay, I have a project that I'm on for this week or you know finals, whatever, that's gonna require more time than normal, cross-reference, okay? Again, if you solve for the worst, these times should still be able to stand. If you have an increased workload and you know when that typically will happen during your week and you wanna get some more sleep, then you might have to switch a day for, Switch it around, but you still want to be able to keep three and you should still keep three. And with six hours of sleep, you'll still be able to function and maybe you can catch up the next week. If you're going to travel, so scenario D is travel. So if you're going out of town, one, I recommend just bringing travel things or booking a hotel or Airbnb that has a gym or fitness equipment. So you can do bands fit into a bag nicely, a jump rope fits into your bag nicely so you're good or just have a gym at your disposal so you can continue to work out. Or you can double up the week before or after, or just add two the week before, one after, or one the week before, two after. Y'all know how to do math. Switch that thing around and make sure that you're successful. Because if you did five blocks, then you have some more options to add an extra workout in. And then the last one is just a downtime week, right? So if you have downtime, I think three is a good minimum. If it's not a if you're not going to usually have downtime, I wouldn't plan to do an extra workout. I would do a recovery day. So use that day to stretch, do some yoga. I mean, in my program anyway, that's already incorporated. You always want to warm up and cool down anyway. But that's a good recovery day or a good day to try something new, like a new version of fitness because you never know what you're going to like. And you may like me because guess what? I have heels-based dance fitness classes in addition to my training. I am offering that now. So sign up, dance with me virtually, and I will see you in the next one. I hope that this helped you and the real gym gym, the real gym is you. So go forth, be great, carve out those calendar sets. You know you that bitch when you cause all this conversation. You know you that bitch when you cause all this conversation. You know you that bitch when you